<laughs> people are going to notice your change is not gonna like it first and foremost so get ready for that also let me help you right now the more you tap into this femininity the more women are going to hate you understand that once again the more you tap into this femininity the more women are going to hate you why is that because it draws male attention my overall message for this video as black women is that we spend less time trying to look like the thing and i'll get into that in a minute <laughs> less time trying to look like the thing and more time actually being the thing that the look signifies let me explain what i mean so if you've been following my channel you know that i was recently in miami i was on miami beach and there were two group well many groups but uh, various groups of black women and there was a group of black women who appeared to be in their I don't know late 30s possibly early to mid 40s and they were twerking on the beach had their butt cheeks um, in the in the phone in their camera phone and it appeared that they were uploading this to social media and there were other groups of, of black women who were twerking as well and one could argue they're just having fun they're on the beach right like the location is not necessarily inappropriate. Um, however, there was a, uh, some families as well. And so I observed a particular family, a woman who had uh, three kids and they, they were like teenagers for the most part. And she was there with her husband and she had on the type of bathing suit that was, uh, where well, she was fully clothed or she appeared to be more covered up. And I don't know, it could be uh, for religious purposes or, you know, cultural purposes. And I asked myself, you know, just based on sort of that dichotomy of the women twerking and posting their twerking videos, you know, on, on, on the Internet uh, in real time versus the woman who was there with her family with a, a swimsuit pretty much covered up, being, you know, obviously her behavior was very conservative in comparison to these um, this group of women. And in that moment, I thought about something and I could be wrong here, but I thought about, huh, I wonder with these women, the ones who were twerking, why are they twerking and posting it? For who, you know, are they trying to attract attention? Are they trying to, um, I don't know, enchant a, 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 the male gaze um, with the hope that perhaps someone will land in their DMs and that will, you know, lead to something bigger and better? Is there a competition happening here? You know, not only amongst that group of women who are twerking, but also at large, right? Because one could argue that, well, if you're twerking openly on the beach, that you uh, perhaps have a certain air about you that, you know, you're like, yeah, I probably look better than most people out here. I'm gonna bend over and <laughs> put my butt cheeks in the air for everybody to see and have someone take pictures. Um, but then I, I look at the woman who, again, was in a much more conservative kind of uh, situation with her family and that woman, one could argue, you know, just by the looks of it to the naked eye that she ha was having a boring experience. <laughs> you know, she's there with with her kids, with her with her husband, you know, with, with her family. Who in this situation, let's just say if this is a competition, who wins here? And this is what I want to talk about is because I would argue that the group of women who were twerking perhaps do not even realize that there is a competition even happening. The woman who was with her kids and her husband with a covered up swimsuit on already won the competition. She already won. <laughs> and you, you can say, well, what do you mean? What competition are you talking about? I want to talk in this video about the ways in which women compete. Now, this 
I, I did some research on this topic and I found very little. And so the funny thing is I'm actually making the video that I wanted to see when I was looking for a video to help me make this video. But so a lot of this is coming from just lived experience. A lot of this is coming from, um, again, like a little bit, a little bit from research, but women are competitive just like men in a different way. And why I'm bringing this up is because the next couple of videos or so are going to sort of deal with this, but it's going to be an undertone. So I wanted to make a video where I actually make competition the main topic. So that way, as I make subsequent videos, you will have a baseline for where I'm coming from. Women compete. And if we want to talk about the BBL pandemic, if we want to talk about, you know, who's the most fertile, you know, who looks the most fertile, so to speak, who looks the most feminine, so to speak. Um, these are ways, you know, women compete via looks. And when we, again, going back to the BBL pandemic, going back to the uh, accessibility of surgery, a lot of this, although people will say that they, you know, they do it for them and they don't do it for the male gaze. Um, I, no one lives in a vacuum. And I think it's undeniable that there's a competition and sometimes it is subconscious. So it's not always a overt competition, but a lot of times these things are very subtle. An example is that, you know, women often compete. So how many kids, you know, these are questions that a woman could ask another woman. How many kids do you have? Okay. Uh, what, what activities do your kid, are your kids involved in? Oh, okay. Are you going to have more kids? <laughs> you know, now on the surface, these seem like very innocent questions and sometimes they can be, but sometimes, and, and probably more often than not, women are sizing up other women. You know, women want to know. So are you married? You know, what does your husband do? <laughs> you know, uh, these are just, these are feminine questions that women ask when a lot of times you'll see that men may not really ask those same questions. They don't really care. You know, men compete in a whole nother way. Um, for men, it, it seems to be more about showing, you know, like actually having something tangible to show as opposed to uh, just a, a, the, the surface appearance of something. Uh, for women, oftentimes the surface appearance of something seems to be more enticing than the actual thing. And this is what I'm saying, going back to the women on the beach, you know, again, my advice here is if you are a woman and you are aware of this or not, know that a competition is always happening. Even if you, similar to me, I don't consider myself a competitive person. However, I look back on sort of conversations that I've had with people and now realize, wow, I didn't realize somebody was sizing me up when they were, you know, or... I didn't realize that, you know, even me maybe asking someone else a question, it could be in my subconscious that people could assume that I'm competing. And maybe I am, <laughs> you know, as I talk about other things, I want this to be something that we're aware of. You know, if you ask yourself, why are women willing to die for, for a certain body type? You have to look at the competition. You have to look at the ways in which women compete with each other. And I mean, there's some serious like, you know, biological, you know, reasoning behind like scientific re reasoning, which I'm not going to get into. <laughs> I don't necessarily feel qualified to get into all that. I will link a video in the description that will give you more uh, insight if you're interested in this topic. But I want to talk specifically now about why black women are why black women, when they compete, uh, they lose <laughs> a lot. You know, I'm not saying they always lose, but black women often lose. And I think some of this comes down to the kind of competition that like it comes down to us again, not realizing that a competition is even happening and us focusing and fixating on the wrong 
uh, plays or the, you know, the wrong components with, let's just say, I'm using a metaphor here that this is a game, we are playing wrong. We're not playing it right. You know, we're not being, that's, I mean, maybe we're not being strategic. But again, going back to the, the physical uh, features, whether it be all the things that you can take off and put on, like all the wigs and, and lashes, whether it be, again, the surgeries, the dangerous surgeries. But all of these things are sort of, um, what you're doing is you're putting stock and value into looking the part. You know, a lot of this goes back to what is it, what is it like, you know, how can I look more feminine? And, and, and embedded in that is, also this sort of very uncomfortable reality of how can I look more fertile, okay? And I'm gonna be getting more into that in another video. You know, how can I look younger? How can I look, how can I have the appearance of being something that I may not even be? You know, there's a lot of stock put into that in within our culture. And again, I'm obviously I'm not saying all black women, but I'm saying that this is a thing. Whereas, you know, and I'm not going to make it uh, a race thing in this case, although one could argue that there is a racial disparity here. But when you look at other groups, these could also be black women of other cultures. So perhaps some black women in various parts of Africa and that type of thing. When you look at other cultures, you'll see that sometimes, you know, there may not be a ton of resources and, and value uh, put into the look, but there are definitely resources and value put in the being. Being it as opposed to looking like it, right? Th this, is, this is the important part. Don't just look the part, play the part. Don't just try to look feminine, figure out how to actually be feminine, right? Don't, you know, if you want to be a, a, a mom, for example, are you just going to try to, you know, look nurturing? <laughs> or are you going to try to really be nurturing? And a lot of times this starts years before you have a kid. This is not like, oh, you get pregnant and you just become nurturing. But oftentimes these are traits that you have throughout a, a, a big portion of your life, right? If you want to be a wife, learn how to compartmentalize and prioritize your family. If you want to be a boss, that's the real boss. <laughs> the real boss was not the women on the beach with their butt cheeks in the air. They may have felt empowered. They may, may have felt, those women doing that may have felt free, right? They're, they're in Miami, they're at the beach, they're on vacation. Hey, I can put, I can put my butt cheeks out to work and, and post it on Instagram. However, the real boss was the woman who looked to probably everyone else as though she was just bored. <laughs> She's the real boss because she, because she wasn't looking like, she didn't have to put so much energy into looking like she was a boss or looking like she was empowered or looking like anything. She just was. And I would, again, I would argue that instead of trying to look like the thing, whatever it is you you know you you desire, you want to be the thing. It's really important that we be the and that we become the thing that the look signifies. It is important that we become that. If you are getting plastic surgery because you want to look more feminine. Maybe you want to have, you know, whatever, big breasts and big butt, whatever. And so you're getting the surgery to look more feminine. But what you actually are doing is 
trying to be something, what you really want to do is instead of trying to look more feminine, you want to actually be more feminine. And, and, and being more feminine is not a look, right? Being more feminine is an energy, it's an attitude, it's a lifestyle, it's a personality, it's the way you do things, it's the way you think, it's how you treat others. That is actually feminine. So, you know, the look signifies something. And I think a lot of times, many of us spend a lot of time trying to attain that look, but you really need to be attaining the thing that the look signifies. Attain the actual femininity. Because I can tell you that there are women who have no curves. They are flat chested. They have no hips. They have no butt or, you know, small butt. And these are the women, many of them who are winning. These are the women who may not look fertile, but have five or six kids, <laughs> right? And then you have the women who look quote unquote, feminine, who have the curves, who may look fertile and are twerking on the beach desperately, hoping that a man will approach them, hoping that a man will slide, slide in their DMs on Instagram. I would argue that that is the bottom shelf femininity. <laughs> That's bottom shelf femininity. So don't just look don't just try to look like you're owning your power and you're, you know, again, you're so powerful and a boss. Actually be introspective. Actually be vulnerable. Actually be patient. And one of the things that really inspired me to make this video is my video, the reason why uh, so many Black women are single is has now reached uh, 416,000 views. And although that is remarkable, I do get several comments on a regular <laughs> uh, from Black women, you know, calling me a pick me and that type of thing. And so I had to really think about this. Why would a Black woman, you know, I make content for Black women, right? I make content for Black women and people who care about Black women and people who love Black women. Why would a, a random black woman co comment on my video where I'm trying to, you know, give information or even just elicit and incite a discussion? Why would this person call me a pick me? And I had to go back to the competition. And I had to ask myself, who's winning here? Is it the woman who's in my, the comment section on my video calling me a pick me? Or is it me? <laughs> <laughs> the one who made the video, the one who has the life experience, the lived experience enough to be able to make a video that 416,000 people decided to watch. So I just have some, uh, I have some announcements that I want to make. And um, so part three of twerking will still be coming. So <laughs> stay tuned for that part three of my twerking video. Check out the, the first two videos that I, I did, <clears throat> excuse me, related to this topic. Um, also my email list. So if you've been following me in the community uh, tab, I posted something there and also in my last video, but I will be uh, hosting and having webinar style events off YouTube. And these, uh, I call, I'm calling them events, but essentially, these will be going into sort of a deeper layer of many of the videos that I make here, we're gonna be going deeper. And so I know some of you have reached out to me wanting one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and consulting sessions. Um, my rate is, for some people, I guess not the most affordable. So I decided to offer this option uh, for those who want the information, um, but perhaps, you know, want to save money and it's a more affordable way of, of disseminating the information. So um, these sessions will vary. I will do, you know, several sessions, but you have to be on my email list to get the information. And so examples will be, you know, how to get started on YouTube, um, how to uh, how to tell your story, 
um, how to unpack your story. And then also, if you're interested in writing a book, I have two books on Amazon. So I'll be doing a session about how to get started uh, self-publishing a book and things like invisibility. Many of you have reached out asking me about why do I keep saying I'm invisible? What am I talking about? So I'm going to be going into more depth and ultimately detailing how I regain my power. And that is a, a very personal story. So many of these things I don't want to put on a public platform like YouTube. I actually want um, it to be targeted at people who really are interested, right? So that's that's another uh, announcement there. And I will be um, posting some things soon about my business curated legacy. Um, it's going through a good transition. And so I'm going to be um, giving you guys more information about the journey I'm getting ready to go on. So stay tuned for that. And I want to shout out a few different, several different people here. Uh, one is Dr. Thunder. So shout out to Doc, Dr. Thunder. I'm going to link his video and or his channel into the description box on this video. He reviewed three of my videos and um, he actually did one of uh, a live stream about my last video called, it was called um, The Pandemic that, Bl that Black Women Never Told You About. And so he has been a great supporter. Shout out to you, Dr. Thunder. Thank you for giving me more exposure. I do want you all to go follow his channel and subscribe to his channel um, and also watch that video. Um, that video actually inspired to some degree this video that I'm doing now. Uh, and so I'm going to be probably talking more about that later. Um, but I also want to take the time to shout, shout out um, my subscribers and supporters who have donated to my channel. And so, and so also stay tuned. I'm probably going to be posting this in the community tab. But these folks have donated via um, Super Chat uh, when I went live, when I was going live, Super Sticker, uh, Cash App. And yeah, I think there's various ways you can donate. But <laughs> um, so we have Too Tall, uh, Aboriginal Zone. Oh, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that wrong. Is it? I think it's Zone 1 Eastro. Uh, shout out to Alex Miner. Shout out to, is it Red Reddick J16? <laughs> Reddick J16, uh, shout out to Danny Garrett, Sivy Siv, shout out to Mr. Uh, Bobby Wright, and also shout out to Adrian King. So I just wanted to say that again, these folks um, took the time to donate in some capacity, it, either it's whether it be Cash App, like I said, when you're when you go live, people can do uh, uh, give you like a super sticker or super chat. And then there's also super thanks. That's what I missed. So uh, you guys can at any time um, provide a super thanks to me um, and also the cash app you can do anytime. Uh, but then I think during the live streams, you can do the super sticker or the super um, chats. And so uh, these folks donated in various capacities, but I just want to thank you all for supporting my channel. It does mean a lot. These videos do not are not... Uh, quick, you know, like it takes time to make this content. And so I appreciate you all. And if you, again, want to donate to my channel, uh, you can do that via Cash App or via a super thanks right here on YouTube. All right. So I think that concludes the point that I want to make um, in this video. Ultimately, stop trying to just look like it, but be it. That is my overall message here. Um, so please do subscribe to my channel, um, like this video, click the links in the description, get to know my business, Curated Legacy, a bit more, and also my books on Amazon. I have a children's book on Amazon called My Brother Adam, as well as a book, a memoir about being an invisible black woman on Amazon. So... Um, Naka here <laughs> to make the invisible visible. I always feel like there's so much to say at the end. Naka here to make the invisible visible. Share this video. Again, please do subscribe. And as always, stay tuned for more videos.